All right, this is part two of God's great rescue plan, that he is the super, super, super abundant way maker in places where there is absolutely no way out. So this is God's rescue operation. We're talking about floods, and we talked so much in the first video about God's great, great mercy and his love, that he is so for you, that you so for me. He is wanting to gather people out. Jesus died for the entire world, and his loving kindness, his mercy is chasing down the world to grab them out of the fire and to rescue people out. So this is his rescue operation. So in this video, we're going to talk about um, what God says about floods. So really, he likens like a lot of messes and a lot of like just hell that goes on around us to floods. And we're going to talk about what it looks like from our position when we're in the midst of that and maybe some of where that comes from and then who God is in that in the midst of floods and then we're going to talk about God's rescue operation and how to position ourselves when we find ourselves in that place to get God's way of escape so because there is a strategy that God gives in his word we're going to break that down okay so first I just want to paint a picture so we're looking at Exodus this is Exodus 14 I think and God basically tells us, so they're like, there's all these like millions of people coming out of Egypt, Israel, and they're at the edge of this huge sea, the Red Sea, and behind them there's armies from Egypt coming after them, chasing them with swords and chariots to kill them, and, and Israel's like, we got all their wealth and all their riches, because they gave, them all, gave us all their riches to leave when we left, but we don't have any swords, and like, we, we can't fight this thing. And they're basically, they cry out to God, and God says, don't worry, like, I'm going to fight this battle. He says, I'm going to show you a great deliverance today. And this is what he does. So there was no way out, right? There's no way they could go behind. There's no way they could fight. And there no, was no way they could go in the front. And so God tells Moses, the leader, to stretch out your hand, put it in the water. And these huge water, like, just like, I just want you to have this picture of, like, these huge huge walls of water and they literally walked through can you imagine like I'm like God can you just like take me back in time I just want to see that I just want to like walk through the waters like that but these huge walls of water on every side and God literally is leading them with like a pillar of fire and a cloud he was like surrounding them with his presence they couldn't even come in to get them and God was leading them in the way that they should go, right? Because I think it was like dark and <laughs> underneath the water and where they were walking. But that's the picture. Okay, so let's look at what are floods. All right, so we're going to start in Psalm. I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures. Psalm 69. But basically, one of the floods that comes is, you know, we've talked, I've, I've talked quite a bit about the power of our tongue. And death and life is in the power of the tongue. I just called really, really super bright from the window. Um, the clouds are coming. Okay, thank you, Lord. Um, woo! Shiny, shiny white. Okay. Um, anyway, the power of death and life is in the tongue. So um, the words that others speak over us, even behind our back, can be like a barrage of waters and attacks that come against us. Um, because you hear, you'll hear that in the spirit. You'll you know, you're, you feel this oppression and this kind of flood coming, and that can be from gossip and slander from others. It doesn't mean we have to, like, look for it or analyze it or anything, but God knows the things that are done in secret. But this is what um, King David says. You know, he's being chased by a bunch of armies. We um, experience things, you know, Jesus said, if you have murder in, in your, if you have hatred in your heart, you're a murderer. So he says, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. And they, would, that, they that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then, okay, so then he goes on, and he's like, God, you know my foolishness, my sins are not hid from you. And um, he says he's weeping, he chastened my soul with fasting. Um, and then he says, you know, they that sit at the gate speak against me. But as for me, that's what he says that he does, as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me, in the truth of thy salvation, deliver me out of the mire, and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me, neither let the deep swallow me up. 
and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. So he's drawing near to God in the midst of that based on God's mercy and loving kindness. All right, so we're going to look at Psalm 32 next. And um, in this situation, he's talking about floods really that have to do with whether it's from others or not, but, but it can have to do with our own sin and our own stuff as well. And, and God is calling, um, calling forth his forgiveness and his mercy to come into freedom and forgiveness. He says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned to the drought of summer. Selah, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. So God promises to instruct and teach in the midst of great waters and floods. And he's going to be the hiding place. He is the hiding place in the midst of that. That's who God is. And when we find ourselves in that place, God's like, it's the acceptable time is now, right now, today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. He says that when, when there's in an acceptable time of your mercy, it's the time of God's mercy. Okay, now who is, who, who, how can we see who is the Lord a little more clearly in the midst of floods? Okay, so Psalm 18 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me. The floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills were moved moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. The wings of the wind. He made darkness a secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. That the brightness that was before him, thick, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire, yea, he sent on his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me, also, he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. So that's who our God is. God will take vengeance in the midst of a flood to send out a rescue operation. All right, we're going to look at Psalm 93. Okay, this is who God is in the midst of floods. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he girdeth himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea, thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becomes thy house, O Lord, forever. Ha! The Lord sits upon it. All right, Psalm 29. How mighty is God? Check this one out. I love this. All right. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. Okay, it goes down. Let's see. The Lord sits upon the flood. Yea, the King, the Lord sits. King
king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people, and the Lord will bless his people with peace. So God has a position, because he is, a, he, he is peace. He is in a position of who he is, of being peace. And he will bring his people up to peace in him. So, all right. And 24, I think, was the last psalm. <laughs> so this is even in the midst of floods at what God can do. So he can, he actually can set you up and position you even in the midst of a flood. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. And he talks about, you know, who can go into his presence after that, which is an amazing, amazing passage. But Isaiah 43 says, this is what God says. Uh, you know, about this situation. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, can put your name in any of those. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, redeemed you. I have called you by thy name, and thou art mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba, Sheba for thee, since you are precious in my sight. You are precious in his sight. You have been honorable, and I have loved you. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring you. Okay, so he talks about bringing your seed. All right, Isaiah 59, and then I'm going to talk, talk, talk a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about strategy. Isaiah 59. Ha. Huh. So this is just a quick one. When the enemy shall come, this is verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So when the enemies, all those floodwaters are coming in, the Lord sets up a standard just like for Israel. Walk through the waters, walk through the waters, walk through the fire. I'm going to be with you. Okay, but what's the strategy? Okay, because there is a strategy. So Psalm 107 kind of breaks down a bit of a strategy. And you see it in the other Psalms too, but this is the, um, a Psalm that really gets a picture about the loving kindness of God. What is the loving kindness of God? It is that when I cry out to God, he comes for me. That when I cry out for him, no matter how many times I've messed up, I cry out to him, I call on the name of the Lord, and he comes. And his salvation is right now, again. Sometimes, you know, you don't always see it just like immediate, immediate. But he, he, he absolutely initiates a rescue plan the moment I cry out to him. The moment you cry out to him. That's who he is. So Psalm 107 goes through all of these scenarios over and over and over again. And they call him, they cry out to God and he comes to their rescue. And then things get really messed up. They cry out to God and he comes to their rescue. And they get messed up. And it's like this whole thing. At the end of the psalm, it basically is saying, Who is wise and will observe these things? Even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. So this the whole psalm is this is the picture, the picture of God's loving kindness. That we would understand and praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. His goodness. He is so good. He is so good. He's looking all the time, looking for someone to cry out to him. Is there anyone on this earth that's crying out to me today? Because I'm ready. I'm ready in my goodness. I got so much goodness. I want to come rescue. I want to heal. I want to deliver. I want to restore. Is there anyone who's going to cry out to me today? That is who God is. That is the goodness of God, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. But I'm going to focus in on a specific portion of this. It says, 28, Then they cry unto the Lord in their troubles, and he brings them out of their distresses. He makes the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then they are glad, because they are quiet, and he brings them into their desired haven. God has a desired haven for me and for you, and he wants to bring us in. Even out of many waters, he wants to gather them out. For David, it took some time. Joseph, it took time, but God was with them in the midst of all of that. And actually, the more time it took, 
it seemed like the greater the positioning in the end because there was a work of intimacy with God and faithfulness and a, um, um, a purification that was happening to prepare David to be king, to prepare Joseph to be a leader. Um, but I love that. There is a desired haven. So they cry out to the Lord. Okay, so if you find yourself, when I find myself in a mess or whatever, you know, just in a, whatever, I cry out to the Lord. God is faithful. And and then Jesus said something in the storm, and I'm just going to speak this over everyone and anyone. Um, he said, peace, be still. He just spoke to the storm. He said, peace, be still. And that King Jesus is the same Jesus that lives on the inside of me. So I can say, peace, be still in the midst of any storm, because he who lives in me is greater, sits on top of any of the floods, whatever. I let him fight my battles. He quickens me with the words to bring it. So I say, peace be still. And then God's able to lead. He says, then they are glad because they are quiet. And he brings them into their desired haven. So we have to get quiet enough to actually be able to hear the voice of the Lord. Psalm 46 is another one I would love. Um, but basically, the, the scenario is this huge floods. God is greater than anything. His voice actually like... <clears throat> Like, blast it all out. He's so good. And he's always looking to rescue out of the floods. So he wants to give a rescue plan. He wants to give a strategy. But we have to have this crying out to him and coming to him. You're my rescue plan. You're my rescue operation. You're my God. You're my king. You're my Lord. And I'm calling out on your name for salvation for whatever the situation is. And then quiet. Peace be still. And then you're able to hear the instruction of the Lord, and he will lead you in, into your desired haven. So, he loves us. We cry out to him. I encourage you to meditate on Psalm 46, because there is a place of peace and a place of rest in God that he wants and has positioned for any of us to come into at any time with him. God bless you, he loves you, and I love you.